Hello my soccer universe, this is the last video before Christmas and let me wish you happy holidays in case you were celebrating and you know I will probably keep up making videos during this uh, break however maybe not with the frequency that I've been doing over the past two days where it was kind of crazy I would readily admit but I want to say a few things but at least my year-end videos and the occasional review video on Serie A but maybe also on the Premier League you should get. But speaking of Christmas, I have to say, when I think about this past week in Italy, um, I'm not getting a very Christmassy mood in there. Uh, a, I think Milan completely, at least football, for football, I spoiled my Christmas. Both of my favorite teams go into the uh, winter break, although Italy doesn't really have a winner, let's say the Christmas, uh, having not recorded a win, which yeah is not fun. I'm not going to have my Christmas spoiled because of that, but I just wanted to have it mentioned. Uh, and if you watched yesterday's uh, Derby della Sole, oh man, uh, everything but Christmas spirit in that one. This was a touchy affair, uh, to say the least. I'm still wearing Bologna, uh, actually a away jersey, because this was probably the result that made my uh, week in a way, you know, clutching to straws. But I have to say, Bologna still is a very... Uh, is very much a story this year in Serie A that actually really excites me. Um, I really want them to do well. I really want them to catch one of the top four spots. So if the season finishes as it does right now, I think I'd probably be overall content, although I really would not be content with either Inter and Juve winning the Serie A title. But you know, if I have to choose between those two, let it be Juve. <laughs> although Inter, Inter is still far ahead their best team in Italy and I've been saying this very consistently and there's not much going to change but one thing will not happen they will not uh, three-peat for the Coppa Italia thanks to Bologna and that is at least something for this Milan fan but I would say uh, let's start actually midweek in the Coppa Italia because I made a short video already around it, uh, but, 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 but I want to just repeat it was two major upsets. I mean, we had the uh, uh, number one team from last season, number one team from this season, potentially over uh, 2023, the two best teams in Italy crashing out of the Coppa Italia um, and Napoli losing at home to Frosinone. I mean, already last year they lost to, uh, I think it was Spezia in the same round, losing at home in emphatic uh, fashion to a Frosinone team that, yes, is promoted, but actually as a promoted team is doing quite well. I They might not have too much with rele rele relegation, might survive for another season. Still, it's un unexcusable to, to be honest. Yes, Napoli played a second string team, but if you just see the changes, just, just before the goals were scored, uh, Di Lorenzo is coming on for Mario Rui. Mario Rui should actually play more often. Uh, Lobotka came on, Kvarskelia then came on, Ozyman came on, and two minutes later after those two came on, Barrenchea makes it 1-0 for Frosinone. And then, yes, uh, Caso quickly adds a second one, and then Napoli are chasing a game, opening it up and end up conceding two more. And it's really, really uh, not good. I mean, Khadir and Harui, uh, both stoppage time goals. Also has, has, as I've seen, that Napoli had scored a goal, but there was a handball by Simeone in the build-up as well. After the game, well, let's stay a little bit with Napoli because there's many things to say. Ozyman, uh, we have the contract extension for until 26. He gets a hefty pay raise. Uh, also, there is now a release clause. So, you know, if anyone can consume, Napoli is surely going to cash in. And Ozyman is definitely one. I'm not sure he will leave Napoli uh, that quickly. But if someone wanted, now the stage is set. And maybe next year you do another negotiation, blah, blah, blah. Typically now in Napoli style. But the other thing of, of Napoli that I will say is that De La uh, just between this game and uh, the Derby della Sole really went off uh, in a way for, first of all, saying that, yeah, he had come, when talking about the coach, coach he, said he knew that um, Rudy Garcia at the moment he hired was not the right man and that he did understand that he just copied the... He just had to copy the Spalletti style. But he also said um, his search was hampered by the fact that 
after this great success by Spalletti. No one really wanted to come in because he could only lose from that on. Even Spalletti, because that's why he left, because he knew he couldn't repeat that. Uh, then he went into the Serie A, is only governed by old people with no vision and how he would see a Serie A. He actually would make a Serie E. E standing for elite, where there are only the big teams in there and the ones that get enough um, fans in there. And he name dropped Palermo and Bari. Curiously enough, also two southern teams, but where he is right that those two teams pull a huge fan base, as say opposed to Sassuolo, who barely pull anyone into the stadiums. So, uh, and pro potentially, you know, other recently uh, promoted teams like Monza and, and, and so on. He wants to see the bigger teams that. There is a proper car competition that pulls everyone to, together. Um, and while I agree with it in principle, those teams have been led very, very poorly. And there's a reason why those teams are not making it up. Maybe Bari will one day come back. Same thing as for Palermo, but we have to see about that. Uh, he also mentioned, I actually agree with that, that um, in the 80s, Serie A was a 16-team league. They increased to 18, now they increased to 20. And he also said this, all, this only means that we have a lot of small teams that make it defensive and don't allow for open flowing football where in the 80s it was better. No! <laughs> uh, I mean, I did not watch it in the 80s, but if you look at how many goals were scored, it was this was clearly the, the, the high point of Cup Nacho. I mean, Italian games ended a lot 1-0, and that's why Milan and Arrigo Sacchi was such a... Uh, fresh breath of air. However, I do think that Serie A and many other leagues would gravely benefit by reducing the league. Uh, it opens up a little bit the calendar because you lose, uh, if you just go down to 18, you go from 38 games to 34 games. If you go down to 16, you reduce it even further. This is much needed rest and I actually think you get a more high quality product because who would be watching, let's say, uh, Empoli against uh, Udinese, just picking randomly two teams, or Empoli against Sassuolo? Yes, regionally, very much a support, and I think that most of these teams are relatively well run, and they deserve the spot because of that. But I can see the attraction of having it a little bit more condensed. I think, though, even if it was re reduced, that we will still get some smaller teams because sporting merit should be there. As I said, De Laurentiis went off. I think he has some fair points, but in typical polemic style, you know, I don't want to discard it. But I truly want to hit that point. Reduce Serie A. I think a 16-team league would be fine. And remember, the 16... Uh, uh, I'm not sure it was the 16, but the 18-team league had four... Relegated teams four, so that was the real that that was a real jeopardy there. So just think think about it. I also think a Serie probably could uh, benefit from maybe having some uh, relegation playoffs in there as well, especially if you reduce the league. So you know maybe get two uh, relegated teams and one in the playoff. Just putting it out there. However, I thought these comments were really interesting. Let's go to the high point. <laughs> We're talking a whole, whole lot, but I just want, want, want to get that in. Uh, Inter against Bologna, and the game was not a high point. The game was Bologna holding on, and again, both teams, second string squads. Uh, you could uh, argue why is Bologna doing that, but I guess Bologna is now saying, yeah, we have a chance on top four. We have a serious chance for top four, so we left uh, like Xerxes and so on were out but it, the game was still very much everyone uh, uh inter dominating inter playing the third third jer jer jersey which looks weird and uh bologna hang 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 on but there was all not too too too, too many chances and you thought it actually turns a little bit around when a penalty was given for inter and lataro martinez steps up and sees his penalty saved uh, Anatovic afterwards has a pretty big chance and then um, Inzaghi decides, okay, let's bring on the cavalry. He brought on Turam, he brought on the, uh, Barella and he brought on Di Marco. So uh, making it a little bit more serious. And at the same time, uh, Thiago Motto just uh, reacted by just before the end of the game was still nil-nil. Noy and Xerxes came, came on and Xerxes at the moment is one of the hottest prospects in Serie A. 
Uh, but the game more or less ended in a nil-nil draw that was written all over it with advantage Inter. So, overtime kicks off. It's a Di Marco corner that Carlos Augusto heads in. 1-0 Inter and at that point no one really expected anything from, from Bologna. Maybe to their own fault. But there wasn't really much coming from Bologna to be fair. And Inter decided, okay, let's hang back, let's cruise this. We are Inter. We are not gonna get a uh, get a uh, call cut out, and then the Xerxes show happened. Who assists first became uh, in the 112th to get an equalizer, literally out of out of moment, and even better, a brilliant assist from the half line. He sends Ndoye, who has a heavy uh, touch, first touch, but still just gets there ahead of the uh, the goalie. Uh, not Jan Sommer, uh, he was all all on the bench. Lobs it over in the 116th minute. Bologna lead 2-1. And Bologna on to the next round in the Italian Cup. It is absolutely an amazing result, one has to say. Uh, if you look further in the Italian Cup, we have still a few games to be played that came right after the new year. Uh, Milan, for instance, have to play Cagliari. Um, yeah, should be a win, but at the moment we'll talk. Talk, talk about Milan is not that straightforward. Atalanta, Sassuolo is kind of um, a hipster's duel. Roma, Cremonese, again. Cremonese, one of the two Serie B teams left. Yes, Copital is really uh, boring that way and you should have no uh, w trouble with Salernitana. Uh, if we look at the draw now, uh, we will have that uh, Bologna actually will uh, play then Fiorentina, which is, I think, a really cool clash. Uh, we have the winner of the Atalanta Sassolo uh, game will host Milan against Cagliari. Another really exciting one is uh, Lazio is waiting for the winner of Roma. Cremonese will can get a Derby della Capitale. That's gonna for sure uh, add a lot of spice in there. And then uh, Frosinone is waiting for. Uh, will uh, will have to go to the winner of Juve against Salernitana. So a relatively easy draw for uh, Juventus. There one has to say. Okay, enough Coppa Italia plus some polemics. Let's talk Serie A because uh, there were also quite some in interesting shots. I have to say, Genoa is actually surprising me. They're a relatively uh, decent team at, at, at the moment, getting a 2 1 away win at Sassuolo, not something one would necessarily uh, expect. Probably also Genoa, another promoter team that will not have nothing to do with relegation. Um, they even turned around, Pinamonti gave the lead to Sassuolo and then uh, Gudmundsen with a penalty and Ekoban after Gudmundsen assist and Gudmundsen is the player that you have to watch for Genoa, uh, make it a 2-1 away win. Fiorentina also in relatively good form, um, having now three uh, wins out of the last five, Beltran scores early and then uh, they kind of play at home, to be honest. I have not really seen all that much of the game because I was watching the other one. Salernitana Milan. Christmas ruined. Almost. Totally. This is a Salernitana team that only won once so far uh, this season against Lazio at home. And while it did not look great at the, at, at the beginning, uh, Benazir, by the way, back and also uh, Kier, so it looked like a normal Milan lineup almost, although, you know, I knew it will not be an easy game. But once Tomori Heads it in, 1-0, I said, oh, it's all cruising. It's all, all cruising. However, there was this Salernitana. Did create chances. And Mike Mignon had a few good saves in there. I mean, almost a Benazir on, on goal. had a really, really good save. And then the power went out with us because we have a huge storm coming. So I did not see like six or seven minutes of that. Once the power and internet, everything was restored. I turned on. There's a Cantareva corner. And who has it in? Fazio, 1-1. One, one. And I literally say it to my wife. And for this, because I turn on, it's uh, zero, zero, 001. Oh, I didn't miss any. <clears throat> it was fully deserved. It was fully deserved because uh, Sal Santana gave it their all. Now, at the start of the second half, I thought that Milan uh, tried to uh, exert some pressure, but it looked all rather tame. Leao not really in there. I mean, he wants to do it all by himself. I think the pool decision was more, more much of a team player. Uh, there were, I mean, many Milan fans are very much on Giroud's case. I have had to say, when I see how he sometimes just uh, can take a ball and let it bounce to another player. I think this is an invaluable part of his, his play that no one else can make. But while Milan, it looked very disjointed and not much, much control, but uh, at that point, Caleri also was not that great. 
Then Cantareva takes a shot from a very odd angle. Um, it was not even that a hidden shot, but Mike Benio just lets it pass through. I mean, it was a clear goalkeeping mistake. It's 2-1 Salernitana and suddenly uh, Milan need to bring the cavalry. And in, in, a, in an addition, exactly on the goal, Tomori injured himself. Another injury for Milan and this is mounting the pressure as well. Florenzi Jovic and uh, Shukwesa come on. Kind of weird changes in, in, in a way, but there was not much happening. Uh, even Salentana had a good, good chance, but in the last few few minutes there is was one clear chance for Jovic that he just has to con convert, but he at least gets the e equalizer after Giroud assist in the 9-9, 90th minute. And then I thought, well, it will not, not be deserved. I'm sure that Milan will get the chance to win this one. And they had the chance. Calabria, free header and cannot get, get it in. And that would have saved it. But now it's a 2-2 two -two draw at lowly Salernitana. Last place, Salernitana. And this is the point where you have to say title, adio. Um, you now it's you have to hang on to top, top four and this is very similar to what happened last year in in a way and you can take all the Champions League success because it was not really a successful Champions League campaign yes third place blah 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 but um, does it uh, it doesn't look good Pioli is under serious um, threat of being fired I personally am not in favor of that not because I think that. Um, he is doing such a great job. Um, I think he is really to blame at the moment for especially the injury crisis. There is something in, in the staff that is not right, but also that the, the squad seems disjointed. But on, on the other side, I think he's a technically very astute coach that can get you through. I think Milan would be really f right to see it out until the end of the season and then make an evaluation, maybe contact a few coaches in the background in the build-up to that, that you can start already the summer with a new coach. There are also some rumors now that there is an Arabian consortium that wants to take over Milan uh, with a lot of money and reinstall Paolo Maldini. I would love to see Maldini back. Don't get me wrong, um, but I think... Um, as a figurehead, I, I I would give him executive power. I'm not, I was not so certain when I was, he had some great windows, but I think uh, using a little bit of help uh, would be better. I think the recruitment this summer was not that bad. So, but yeah, the big problem for Milan is that you sold away your midfield or you let the midfield go. You had let Kessie go, you let Tonali go, and that was the heart of the title-winning team. And for two for the second season in a row, you could not find a real replacement. Yes, Reinders is cool. Uh, I like the way he plays. Uh, Pulisic, great additions, but I still find in defensive midfield this big hole, the one that can take over. This is where Milan have to look at, and I don't think this is necessarily all Pioli's fault. There's also a little bit of recruitment there. But those are my thoughts. It's getting a long video, video but I'm having fun here, to, to be honest. Then let's go yeah, yesterday. I mean, for me, this was Serie A in Premier League, almost in a, a unison. I was double screening for the entire afternoon. Frosinone against Juventus. Yildiz made his, announced himself on stage, getting a really nice goal to give Juve a 1 0 lead. However, early in the second half, Baez gets an equalizer for Frosinone. It looks like it goes to a stalemate, and then Vlahovic comes on. Scores the winning goal because he actually has been benched and suddenly it work, works again. He also scores the second one, but it was not allowed for an offside. Um, in the afternoon, I think the big one was definitely Bologna against Atalanta and Atalanta had their chances and probably could have gotten more out of that fit. Uh, and just when you thought this will go out in a nil-nil draw, blah, blah, boring, boring, boring. At the same time, Spurs were actually having some fun with Everton. Um, uh, Lewis Ferguson. Heads it in, and it's another win for Bologna, and Bologna stay top four. Uh, as I said, this is, I really like this Bologna team. I really like what Thiago Motta is doing. And now, of course, Motta was also named by La De Laurentiis in his rent. Um, I have to say, um, I want him to stay at Bologna. As hot as a property it is, confirm this success confirmed his success because in previous he was not that uh, outstanding or he never was given time. Give Mo Thiago Motta some time and he probably should be smart enough to stay for a little bit longer before he takes the next challenge because in at, at Bologna you can really, you have good players, you have good support, you have a young team, you can really work it out. 
if you go to a bigger team, there's a whole lot more pressure on it. And that pressure can be very much stifling. So I really hope he will see it out with Bologna. Torino, uh, kind of a disappointing 1-1 draw with Udinese, relegation threatened Udinese. Inter's 2-0 win over Lecce, not much to talk home about. I mean, this was Lecce holding on. Um, Bissek gives them the lead. Then they would have gotten a penalty. But yeah, um, I can see why VAR then uh, turned, turned, turned over. The highlight was Anatovic's assist to Barella to make it 2-0. Uh, Wonderfully back into the path of Barella, who then, uh, just with a few touches, uh, puts it past the, the goalie. It was a really, really nice uh, leap late um, um, move. And one has, 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 has to say, Barella is probably the best midfielder in Italy at this moment. And Banda is getting sad off because he has a mouth. And yeah, Inter cruise to another win. Um, Hellas get a huge 2-0 win over Cagliari. Basically, this was a true uh, relegation duel, which means that Hellas are now moving out of the relegation zone, push Cagliari a little bit in there. And then Roma against Napoli. Uh, what a crazy game that was. It was very touchy. There was a lot of fighting. And I, like Mourinho and Quaraschelia were getting onto it to, 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 to each other, yelling. And then both of them, during the game, I mean, Mourinho is having his head and Quaraschelia as well. They talk, they talk, and maybe seemingly talking at the same time. He's doing the same thing with Ozyman. I thought that Napoli had a little bit more control in the first half. Uh, because, you know, Roma, they just got Lukaku back. But Napoli hit themselves. I mean, Paul Popovertano makes a, f you know, uh, a player, I think it was Bobby falls down in front of him and he kicks him. It's clear red card. Uh, Ozyman gets all, also found, and Pelle Pellegrini uh, just puts it in. Had just come on for Belotti. Um, and then Ozyman is sent off for another tripping. And it's two down. And of course, they are not going to win this one. And Lukaku uh, scores then uh, the second goal deep into garbage time. So uh, there you go. It was it was not a good watch, but it was a big win for Roma. Because as we said, that Roma have not been doing so well overall. Um, you know, they were eighth ahead of this round. Now they're in sixth. Napoli now only in seventh. And Napoli under Mazzari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, tough run of games that also has to be mentioned. But it will be a struggle for Na Napoli to make it back into Europe. We also had the little matter of Mourinho wanting badly to stay at Roma and putting pressure on the ownership, who is not so sold on him. Because, you know, with Mourinho, you, I mean, Mourinho, I don't understand why Mourinho is so loved by Roma fans. Maybe because of his attitude and, you know, he brings the big spirit. But on the other side, I really feel that sometimes Maureen is a little bit too much in that. This Roma side under Fonseca was playing brilliantly at times. He was not given the time and injuries played their part. So I want to see. Um, in a way, I would like a change there for Roma that I could fall in love with Roma again, which has been really, really hard in the Mourinho era. Let's look over the expected standings. I mean, nothing really. I mean, Napoli is still in, in, in the top four on the back of a really great rating, but uh, it will be uh, it, it will be tight. You see, Fiorentina, Roma, Bologna, all there in in there. I think Atalanta having a rather rough run of form might not make it. And Lazio, similarly, we barely have mentioned Lazio in this video. Tell tells you on the bottom we see um, Udine and Elas just outside of the relegation zone with Kalia, Empoli and Salentana going down. I think uh, especially Salentana look like a team. I mean, Pippo Inzaghi is working hard. I love to see him on the sideline uh, and, and so on. I wish him all the, all the success and Salentana is known for their escapes. At the moment, it does not look good. Only nine points and you're already five points off safety. You need to get a run going, that's for sure. When will we come back? Yeah, right after Christmas, in a week from, from now, Serie A, there's no break, no rest for the wicked. I actually think the Genoa Inter game, Genoa have been good. And let's see if they can take points of another big team or if Inter will continue rolling. I would suspect the latter, but you never know. Milan play against the Boga team in Sassuolo. Also not good if we have a big one between Juve and Roma, although this is a um, tie that Juve generally wins overall. Uh, Napoli have to now bounce back against Monza with also Fiorentina against Torino and Bologna have to go to Udine. So this kind of all the top teams in there. 
I had a fun with this video too, to be honest. Much more fun than it was actually fun for me watching these games. So yeah, let me know where you think Serie are going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.